Good morning. We're here to discuss the goings on at London Stadium tomorrow against the mighty Brighton and Hove Albion. For those of you that have joined us for the first time or even long time watchers of this particular broadcast, please don't forget, as it says on the banner, to like, comment on and share the stream. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, we thank you very much indeed for your support. And speaking of support, we like to support this particular concern, which is the Irons Supporting Food Bank's charity. If you're not too sure what this is all about, this is a very worthwhile cause that operates in the Newham Borough area for families that have fallen on stony ground in this particular cost of living crisis. We're all going through it, but some of us are able to withstand it a little bit better than others. And this charity supports those families that are not particularly coping with this particular time in our history. So you've got a Just Giving link there. I will copy and paste it and put it into the live chat. So if any of you guys want to jump on and put a few quid in the pot, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, if any of you are going to the match tomorrow, if you come out of Westfield Shopping Centre, you're walking towards the Olympic Stadium in front of you. You've got the Aquatic Centre on your left. Somewhere on the left, on the benches, John normally rocks up. He's the guy that runs the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity, a very worthwhile cause. If he's there, if you if you see him, go over, say hello. He'll have, he'll have a chat. He's a very engaging man. And if you've got any money you want to put into his, into his tin, please do. He will take cash donations, no problem. Even better still, if you want to go along with some food, cans of beans, anything like that, He'll take it off your hands and it will go to a very worthwhile cause. And we thank you very much indeed for your time and support in this endeavour. Duke, match day three of 38, Premier League fixture at home against, I think it's fair to say now, they are our bogey team, aren't they? Brighton and Ove Albion. You're on mute. Let me explain while I'm mute. While I'm on mute, is we've had some scaffolding erected uh -huh. outside the pub. You've had an erection. Uh, I've lost. Yeah, I've had a massive erection outside the pub. I've scaffolded, cleared that up straight away. Fair. Um, and they um, they currently decided to wait today to take it down and move okay, it okay. round the other side. And the problem is, right behind my monitor here is a big old sash window, and they're working outside there this morning. This is always good. So you may well get every few minutes. I'm really good at noises, Rob. We, we realised this last night. And and out of the two ones that we've got. Um, I need a music box. I, right? I, 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 could, I could have been a, a bit, bit of a beatboxer in a completely different career. Richard, thank you. I, I, I'm i still very glowy. I mean, what is this? Hey, Nick, how are you? Hey. It's my, it's my cousin. Way I gathered that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so that's why um, if, if you do hear some very strange noises, it's not me, it's the scaffolders. Um, back to your your comment there, I, I bloody hate them. I, I hate Brighton, not Richard, I hate Brighton. Um, it's just, uh, they are, I, I, I don't know what it is, we, you know, we had those sides before, didn't we, as I think I've mentioned before. Um, one of those sides was, well, I say one of those sides. It was pretty much any team that had Romelu Lukaku um, playing for them at one point. I just hope we don't end up finding Inter in Europe. Otherwise, that's going to go badly. Um, and, and now it just, you know, it now seems like it's bright and they've, they've kind of slipped into the role of, of pain in the rear end of, of any West Ham fan, unfortunately. And um, it's not like... They've got any, and they, again, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but they, ha they have no real world-class players. I mean, they've sold two. Um, two. Two of their big names went, didn't they? One went to Chelsea, the other one went to Spuds um, yep. in, uh, was it Basuma and Cucurella? So, I'm, I, I know they're in this... Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that that's weakened them slightly um, compared to what we come up against um, last season. Um, mm. I just, it, it, they are just one of them sides, mate. And like I said, they've got no top class, you know, standout, outstanding kind of players 
yet we always struggle against them, no matter what we do. Um, and I, I, you know, I hope, like I said at the end of last season, I, I hope this is the one where we go, okay, well, let's put that to bed, shall we, and, and, and move past that. Um, yeah, Rob, you've made still this way. Um, let's hope we can move past that tomorrow and, and, and put a bit of a put up a bit of a kickstart on our season, shall we say? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had the game on Thursday night, and it obviously remains to be seen that is that going to be a help in the sense that we've had certain players like Cornet, like Skamaka that have got minutes under their belt. We've had Bowen that's got a goal that's hopefully going to boost his confidence. Whereas, obviously, they've had pretty much a week's rest between fixtures. So, do you think that that fixture... And I, I appreciate we're, we're saying this before the game, and so and hindsight is always perfect vision. But do you think that that match in, on Thursday night was, it, was a help or a hindrance to us? I actually think it's going to be a help, Rob. I think it was something we needed... To, um... To very much get out of our system. To be honest with you, um, we're, we're we're in a situation where certain players were very much underperforming. Um, one of them got a goal. Um, I still wasn't overly impressed with you know some of the stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't a ten out of ten kind of perfect yeah. performance. I know it's very difficult, but when you when you consider those are the sort of performances he was putting in a lot last season. What we're seeing so far this season is a massive drop-off in form. Um, and then you have the other one uh, in the shape of, of Lanzini. And I know, you know I've seen your your comments backwards and forwards, and, and, and rightly so, to be fair. I mean, he's he's been incredibly poor. He's been the sort of player that's, um, without being disrespectful to him, it's been more of a hindrance than he has been a help. Um, in, in the two and a half games you know, that he's played so far, for the most part. So I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping it's given a bit of a kickstart for the um, for the boys that, that needed it. And, and, yeah, it's good to see, you know, the assist from Cornet, although I, I felt that he did very little else. Um, Schemath of the goal, though, I was watching last night, you know, I felt he did um, very little else. Um we we just have to wait and see, mate. With, with, um, I, I'd like to think it's been a, a help. I'd like to think it's given us the kickstart and the players a bit of a a shot of confidence. Um, but yeah, tomorrow we'll we'll let us know. Um, you know, come up past three, quarter to four tomorrow. We'll know where we stand, and if it's you know, it's really going to be a shit start to the season. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Kent's in the chat and uh, good morning Kent hope you're well uh, I'm sure Kent won't mind he did on Facebook an opposition watch uh, I'm not going to read all of it out I, I, it's it's on the Forge from Iron Facebook page so if any of you watching have got access to it just scroll down you'll find it it was posted about three days, days ago but in Kent's opinion and Kent is as far as I'm concerned he knows his stuff so if, if, he's, if he's saying keep an eye on these players, then you might want to do that. Players that he thinks that we might want to keep an eye on. Moises Caicedo, Danny Welbeck, Adam Webster. They're the three players that, as far as Kent's concerned, are key to their chances of getting a result. Or more to the point, they're the players that we're going to have to try and nullify in order for us to try and get a positive result. Do you, do you, is there any other players that you're concerned about yourself, Duke? No, it, it's pretty much nailed it, mate. I mean, now they've lost Kukurella and, and, and Bissouma. I mean, I, I was a big fan of Bissouma, I have to say. Huge fan. Um, love to have seen Moyes make a move, especially now knowing what we know with regards to, to Suchek at the start of this season. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'd love to have, have, have had him on board. Um, unfortunately, he's, he's obviously got the spuds. <laughs> Morning, Andy. Morning. Um, and, you know, Welbeck's a pain in the ass. I mean, I saw a picture of him the other day and Jesus wept. He's he's done a bit of a, a well, another player we've been linked with in the last 24 hours and, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about Scott McTominay. 
if I'm honest with you. But both of them seem like they've um, been speaking to, uh, allegedly, oh, just a bit of fun, um, the, the, the guy that helped A-Rod um, in baseball a number of years ago with, uh, with his performance. Um, they, they seem to have tried, and they, 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 they both look like a bit of um, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, era, 80s era action movies. You know, they, they've both gone a bit square on the shoulders and jacked up a little bit. Um, I'm saying they're on more than just sort of like... Uh, hey, I'm day. not making any accusations along those okay. lines that if they've gone and spoken to a certain doctor that there's a Netflix documentary about. I'm not making those accusations at all. No. Um, no. But that he he has put on a little bit of a... Uh, he's, he's bumped up as, as well, Beck. He's, he's, you know, a picture of I saw of him week or so ago was made me sit up and go, Jesus Christ. You know, a bit like Torres after he finished playing and he went to uh, yeah. Atletico and he, like, on, honest to God, young young Arnie, when he was competing. You were expecting him to do some of that, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I didn't... Wrestling uh, fans I saw a, know who that was. I saw a, I saw a video of... Um, so it was, a, it was a bit of a piss take video. And it was uh, most players, I was uh, on Facebook, it was one of the Facebook Reels videos, it came up, most players after their retirement, and it showed a, um, a slightly weeble-wobble version of uh, Sammy and Nazri. I saw, well, if you say so, Kent, I agree. I, I agree with him. I, th I think he's a Moyes type player. I'm, I'm not saying that he would be my first pick, but I could see when, when someone said, oh, Scott McTominay, I mean, you know I, I sent the messages out. I'm not saying yeah, he's my yeah, but could I well, see David Moyes wanting him? Yes. Could I see him possibly flourishing at West Ham? I actually think he's a lot better player than people, I say, give him credit for, but do him down for. Because I think yeah, that fair he's, he's probably in the wrong team. Right. Yeah, probably. And as Kieran says there, he'd rather have Fred. I'd actually rather have Jane and Freddie. Uh, Rod and Jane, if I'm honest with you. I'd rather have Rod and Jane. Jane. Not right, said Fred. No, he's dipped it too deep. Um... Is no, that Roy Roy Keane or Roy Keane now, Richard? I'd still have Roy Keane now, mate. I still think you people up. Um, no, Cyber. Just the answer is no. Stop it. Um, but yeah, it was an overweight Sammy and Nasri. It was a, a, a portly uh, R9. Um, it was it was a couple of other players. Uh, uh, who was who was the uh, Thomas Brolin when he went to uh, oh, yeah. Palace? He? he was a bit, you know. And then and then it showed a. He certainly did. And then it showed a picture of um, Sammy and Nasri. Uh, uh, sorry, Fernando Torres. Just jacked the... Like, what the fuck? And he turns round and he's back. Like Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. I've never... Like, that was a transformation and half. Stop trying to go shoulder to shoulder with him in training. You know what I mean? He's, he's yeah. a beast. But, you know, back to Brian. Welbeck's done the same thing. Welbeck's... He's bulked up a bit during the summer. Not sure whether that's going to be a, a definite good thing for him. Um, what I will say is, if you have a look at what when Antonio did the same thing a number of years ago, um, and he absolutely beasted out. He ended up looking like a, a wish at version of Adama Traore. Hmm. Um, it didn't work for him. Hang on, Andy, you've got something in your chin, mate. He's probably looking right now. He's probably, have I? How does he know? <laughs> um, so the, um, the, yeah, you know, I don't know whether that's going to work for him. I, we'll, we'll see. Um, no doubt it'll work for him against us. Um, so we'll just have to, you know, he, he's a concern for me because he, he can score goal. Fair. Um, just real quick, Vanneken, um, I haven't heard anything, but in my opinion, I just look at it. You know, I know he's got a decent goal scoring record and all the rest of it. Where I'm coming at, his his thirtieth birthday is Wednesday next week, and he's never played outside of Belgium. I just think, why now? Why why is he? You know, surely if he was if he was the next Kevin De Bruyne, if he was the next Vincent Company, if he was the next the you know the Belgian players that have gone on to great things, Eden Hazard, they all left belgium well before they were 30 years of age dude didn't they so i'm not yeah quite sure this, this move makes sense i mean listen 
Moise obviously sees something. Let's not um, let's not start second guessing him. Kent, yes. Yeah, I thought you'd like. I've that. I've been I've been clamouring. Wasn't his daughter? Oh. I was clamouring. <laughs> as long as it wasn't with a boy. Uh, this trip. Um, mm. I was clamouring for Traore at the end of last season. Once yep. we realised what was going. In fact, I was clamouring for him in January when he moved to Barcelona. Um, I actually rate him very, very highly. Um, that's me. Don't get me wrong. Um, I know others don't find him an attractive prospect. Um, I don't think um, Gold and Sullivan are going to be ones to um, shell out extra money um, for Vaseline and baby oil that we're going to need to put on the guy uh, before he comes off the bench or before every game to stop you from being able to grab hold of him as he runs off because that's why they do it. Um, I, I take him cheeky. I mean, cheeky ten million. I think it was stated, or maybe even twelve. That's a no-brainer for me. As as Kent um, as as Kent has stated before, it's punt money. Ten million in this day and age. I mean, we've just got. Um, Kara for what 12 and a half 13 yeah, I think it was yeah. something stupid um, so uh, for, for me 12 10 to 12 million on a guy who has done it in the Premier League um, is the sort of player that Moyes loves because he will take him and try and mould him probably into an, uh, an, an attacker you know maybe even the, you know a, a guy that comes off the bench much like Antonio comes off the bench with with half out a go, and I'm not being funny if you're seeing that guy coming off the bench with 20 minutes to go, and you've already been ran ragged by the likes of Corne, Skamaka, Antonio, Bowen, Ben Rama, and you're looking up and going, oh, for fuck, oh no, you're seeing him coming off the bench. You're gonna you're gonna be questioning whether you whether you're up for it. Um, so I, yeah, I for me that's a no brainer. I'd, I'd be going after Trey or eight, um tomorrow morning. To be honest with you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Before we move on to the, oh, yeah, the hang on. what's up? Hang on. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I've got nothing more to say. <laughs> there you go. With Skamaka slap bang in the middle of the pair of them. I, I yeah. I, if I was a defender in that game. Them two and Skamaka, I'd hand in my P45 at my club and just walk off the pitch. I'd take my shirt off and go, see you later on, I'm out. I'll take care. I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. Okay. Before we go on to the predicted 11s and uh, Cyber says he wouldn't go for Triore. So you can have that conversation next time you're in the tavern, mate. And uh, and Duke will try and convince you otherwise, I'm sure. Um, but Rob's in the same place as Cyber. So there you go. There's two, two dissenting hey, voices. Right. But, you know, it's opinions. That's what we're after. Exactly. Uh, right, before we get on to the predicted 11s, uh, we, let's do the, the officials. The referee tomorrow is Anthony Taylor, nonetheless. Uh, his assistants will be Gary Bezik and Adam Nunn. The fourth official will be Graham Scott. The VAR will be Lee Mason. And the assistant VAR will be Nick Greenhow. Happy with that batch of no. officials, mate? No. Um, in, in all fairness, mate, who would be? Let's be perfectly clear on that. If you're if you're a West Ham fan, you are not going to be in any way, shape, or form happy to see two of those names there in Taylor and Mason. Let's be honest. I mean, Taylor Taylor's been in the press for for all of the wrong reasons this week. Um, he missed a very um, very obvious, hugely obvious problem. All right, so um, massive, you don't massive drink. He doesn't know. He's, he's high on sugar from whatever it is that he's drinking. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, as Cyber mentioned earlier, um, yeah, he, he gave he gave the red card to... Um, so check. So check and Fulham with it for trying to get his arm over the head and, and, and clipping him. It's, you know, it's one of them things. You know, I can't... You know, we were standing before, Rob, of, of conspiracy theories and all the rest of it, the standard of refereeing. I've mm. seen nothing that changes my mind. Um, I've, I've, I've seen nothing that changes my mind so far this season. 
It's bad for you, mate. Don't do it. His, don't do his it. aunt's about to burst in his chest for crying out loud. Um, no, I mean, I don't expect to get anything out of that pair of reprobates, to be honest with you, tomorrow. Um, the standard of refereeing really hasn't impressed me so far this season. There's, there's been a lot of, you know, we can sit here and argue and, and slam me fist into the table and kick me toys at me. Bram, the, the referee last week against um, Forrest, gave everything to them. But when the same things happened the other way, we got nothing. I, I don't I don't get it. Um, I don't I don't get the lack of consistency from a lot of referees in this league. And there's two of them involved in our game tomorrow, for, for sure. Yeah, and that's all we ask for as fans is consistency. I know that referees are going to get decisions right, decisions wrong. I've refereed games myself. I've been a linesman many, many yeah. times as well. So I've I've seen it from all angles. I've been a supporter. I've been a player. I've been a coach. I've been a manager. And yeah. so I, I know that they're going to make mistakes, but you do. That's all you ask for as a fan is just a little bit of consistency. Anyway, we're going off on a tangent. Let's get our starting 11. Consistently bad or consistently good would be great. Either way, I don't mind. But as long as they did it for both teams and not one or the other, you know. Fair. Let's get it done. OK, so now. I stress this is what I suspect David Moyes will go with, not necessarily what I would go with, Duke. And I'll explain my reasoning for it. So, in goal, I suspect he will revert back to Lucas Fabianski. Now, Lucas Fabianski did nothing wrong against Nottingham Forest, it has to be said. In fact, if it wasn't for Lucas Fabianski, it would have been worse than a 1-0 reverse. I think Aaron Cresswell comes being back in at left-back and Vladimir Kufal shifts over to the right. Now, I know that Tilo Kera is obviously available. He came on in the second half against Viborg. I've just got a funny feeling you know and I know that David Moyes does like to ease new players in gently. So I wouldn't be shocked to see Ben Johnson partnering Kurt Zuma at the centre of defence. Declan Rice will obviously get the armband. And whether I think he should be there or not, I think he will be partnered by Thomas Socek. Now, Thomas Socek in his last league outing, I actually think did have a decent game, got into good positions, just couldn't convert the chances that came his way. On another day, he could have had a hat-trick. Um, the other night, however, against Viborg, he was markedly less effective. But I do wonder whether, and I said this yesterday, whether he was under orders from David Moyes to babysit Co Connor Coventry a little bit. So that might have been to the detriment of his performance, but we'll, you know, whatever. Then in front of them, I suspect it will be Saeed Benrahma on the left, who was absolutely brilliant against Forrest. And then when he came on against Viborg, shredded there right back and put a ball on a plate for Antonio. He couldn't miss to get the third goal. Jared Bowen on the right, obviously getting his goal. Hopefully that's boosted his, his confidence and we'll see a a better performance out of him than we've seen in the last two league games. Pablo Fornell is in the number 10, and I suspect it will be Mikhail Antonio as the number nine because of the comments that David Moyes made yesterday, again, about Skamaka getting eased in. What are your thoughts? I mean, listen, if that's what he goes with, Then so be it. I'm not going to be pissed off. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to be, you know, questioning what he's doing. Um, what I'd like to see, though, I, I, and what I think we might see, let me rephrase that, is I actually think you'll see Kara um, partner Zoom at the back. I really do. Um, I, I just think that He's got that opportunity. There will be some fans out there that will be questioning if this is the lineup he goes with, why he's still sticking with a, a, a an oval an oval peg in a round hole, shall we say? Um, because you've got the option there now. There will be some. Uh, Oggy won't I, I just I, we're going to ease him back. He, he might see 10, 15 minutes if if everything is going well tomorrow. I think you'll probably see more 
in these European games. I think that'll be uh, up until probably Christmas. I think you'll probably see more of Oggy in Europe yeah. than you will in the 16 league games. Um, other than that, to be honest, there's, there's part of me that wants to see Downs get yeah. some action um, and a start because I think I've alluded to before, um, he would be the perfect foil for someone like Declan Rice. Um, I, you know, he will sit and clean up and allow Deck to go on those on those runs. And by doing so, he also has the passing range and ability um, that Suchek lacks in the in the back end of the pitch, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know. I don't know why he lacks it at the back end of the pitch when going forward to make a simple pass, yet in the final third, our final third, shall we say, our defensive third, he doesn't seem to be able to make the same passes. The same simple 15 to 20 yard pass goes to an opposition player or goes out of play, whereas in their final third, he's able to make that pass out wide, 15, 20 yards, to find our attacking player to continue the attack. So I don't know what goes on here that causes him to freeze a little bit at the back. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I'd, I'd like to see Downs in there, given the opportunity. Um, I'd actually... In place know of Sochek if or...? In place of Sochek, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Um, and then what I'd actually like to see a bit further up, mate, is um, Ben Rama in the 10 where Fornells is. And I'd love to see Cornet out there. I just think that In the middle of the park, I think we could probably see more of Ben Rahman not having to think too much to beat a player, if you know what I mean. If he's, you know, I, I mentioned it prior, Jamaka up front um, and Benny in the 10, that kind of, you know, the, the feeding Ben Rama. He hasn't got a thing to try and beat a player. It's going to be, OK, ball to feet, get it out, get the shot off. Hmm. And and he will score goals. He will score goals from there. Whereas out wide on the left, I, I feel that, um, I feel what we're lacking with Ben Ram has to think too much to beat the player. Hmm. You know, it's, it, we, we saw him do it. We saw him do it. You know, the, the step over the drop or the feint and then come back the other way rocks the player off balance and by the time he's got that balance back he's a couple of yards in front now whether or not you've got the the, the, the quickest uh, right back in the world marking him that two yards is all he's going to need because once he's past you he's in the box it makes it very very difficult um, uh, very difficult for a defender to make a tackle once you break into the edge of that box um but he, does, he, he can't do it all the time. It becomes predictable. Whereas in a 10, the ball coming out to feet, just a quick get it out of your feet and let one go. I think he has the... Um, catch it a bit, buddy. Yeah, mate. Um, he, you know, he has the ability to get it out and bang quick shot. So, tell me a lot last season, Rob. What Ben Rama lacks is, is football and intelligence. I, you know, I'm seeing something slightly... And, and I, 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 I credit him and give him credit where credit's due. I just think if you ta have to take that element away from him where he hasn't really got to think and just let his feet do the talking, i.e. in a 10 roll, get it out. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see Ben Rama score. Um, we'll see him get a few goals this season. Um, and then Cornet out there, I just think he, he offers us that pace, mate. And um, we saw on, saw on Thursday when he gets it right, his delivery's on the money. I don't know if you've seen the formations that they deployed in their opening two Premier League games against Manchester United. It was a really funky formation, a 3-3-3-1 formation against Newcastle. He slightly tweaked it, Graham Potter, and he went 3-4-2-1. Um, do you think that there would be a case, and if you was the manager, for changing formation and getting an extra central midfielder in there? I mean, listen, yes, it, I think the boys on, um, on Fortnite in the other room and where I've still not got my internet set up, right, I haven't got the, the Ethernet cable. 
Um, yes, he's, listen, there is there's an argument to be had all the way around, Rob, isn't there? Um, and, listen, that three 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 one sounded very much like uh, a, a, a football manager um, formation I might have played um, about ten years ago. To be honest with you. There's arguments to be had for and against on formation changes. I mean, listen, I, I hate seeing the three at the back. That's just me because it ain't a three at the back. It's a five. It's actually a three, two, one when we do that or a five, two, three, one. It, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that much, um, you know, but I don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing five at the back because I feel that that's a very negative. Uh, it's a very negative approach to a game. I like our formation drilled in what we do with this formation. Um, you know what you're going to get with this formation. I'd like to see a tweak in the tactics side of it, but not in the formation. We tend to let teams have far, far too much of the ball. Um, some teams like City, yeah, you're going to have to concede a hell of a lot of the ball. And then when you do get the ball, you've got to make it count. We didn't do that. But teams like Viborg on Thursday, when we're letting them have 51% possession, seven, seven more completed passes than we did, 559 versus 552, well, no, that doesn't sit right with me. That should have been us with 700 passes to their 250. That should have been us with 70% possession and with 30. It should have been them trying to get the ball off of us. So I do that we have to we have to change tactics when we, when we're coming up against uh, different teams. So there's no point in playing the same sort of football against City as there is against Vibe. Vast difference in their personnel and their style of play. And this game or uh, this game tomorrow is is very much the same sort of um, it's very much in the same sort of remit. We 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 need to come out. And we need to try and play those, you know, play them. We need to go out. We need to, we, we need to make them start doing the chasing, not let them be happy with the ball. I can't stand it when I say that. Fair. Fair enough. OK, let's move on to the Brighton lineup, And that is, it's pretty much the 11 that played in the last two games as I say he did alter the formation slightly from one to the next so something in or around this whether he'll deploy it as like I say a 3-4-2-1 or a 3-4-3 or a 3-3-3-1 it's a very fluid um, team that he's got there to be honest and even in the game they'll they'll change formation but I suspect it will be Robert Sanchez in goal Back three of Webster, Dunk with the captain and Veltman. Trossard left, March right, Caicedo in the centre, although there's talk that Manchester United are in for him. I think he plays to, um, tomorrow. Mac Allister next to him. It's Mac Allister, not Mac Allister. Um, Lalana, Gross and Welbeck as the nine. If that's what we face tomorrow, Duke, what are you thinking? Scared shitless by Trossard. And gross, to be honest with you, absolutely scared, scared shitless. Gross, uh, this, this is where now my 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 Cornet, uh, my my Cornet prediction comes in because he's got the pace to get back and be able to um, aid Cresswell. Uh, listen, we said it a lot last season, which is why Benny didn't play out on the left, um, which is why you saw. Pablo out there a lot um, yeah. because he would he would help um, you know if you will with um, with Aaron Cresswell out there on the left uh, left back tomorrow is uh, your your sound's gone completely there Duke you you've gone completely Norman Collier now. You, your sound's been a little bit iffy for a while, but it's it's now completely given up. Are you 
I apologise to people for my dog barking. Duke's sound has gone a little bit pear-shaped. Um, what's Kent come in with? Sanchez, one of the best ball-playing goalkeepers in the league, and he's now played for Spain. Yes, because, of course, he's got an English father. He could, before he have got his cap for Spain, he could possibly have been in line for an England call-up. That's now not going to happen. And exactly what Kent's alluding to there, he's a, he's a, a modern goalkeeper. You know, back in the old days, goalkeeper was just, you know, save shots and, you know, come for corners, crosses, whatever. And that was pretty much it. Now you've got to be good with your feet. Your distribution has got to be on point. Uh, to just be a, a good shot stopper in the modern era is not quite good enough to be a top, top team. Now, all right, Brighton, are they a top, top team? No, they're not. I got a funny feeling that the, in the years to come, Robert Sanchez might not be a Brighton player and you might find that he is at a top, top club because I do think he is someone that potentially could operate at that level. Um, I was only joking there. It's only had two Red Bulls, not 15. OK, fair enough. But be careful with them, mate, because honestly, too many Red Bulls and it's it's not good. I've heard people having ridiculous amount of Red Bulls and it's caused their heart rate to shoot up and all sorts of health implications. So seriously, stay away from it. Um, are, we, are we back on? I'm hoping so. Yes, that's better. I don't know. Yeah. That much, thing. Much um, yeah, gross, gross scares me. Um, if yep. it's, if it's uh, him versus uh, Cressy out on that wing, it, it does concern me. Um, and I, I can't be the only one on that. Um, so that's where, for me, Corne, uh and, and helps him out, really, Rob. That, you know, Trossard, the other side, uh, again, another player that, You know, only when you brought the screen up, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, they got them. <laughs> um, so, yeah. He uh, invented himself, hasn't he? I mean, he was... He he was I, I heard whispers when he was at Man... Uh, not Man United, at uh, Arsenal, I think it was. Or uh, well, maybe at Watford. And I, someone did tentatively link him with us. And everyone was like, no, he's an injury waiting to happen. He's gone to Brighton. He's reinvented himself. Listen, I, I would have taken him in. I would have taken him then. Um, I, I remember at roughly the same time we were linked with Sturridge. Uh, not far off, Simon, not far off. I think we were linked with Bradshaw Sturridge at the same the time. Yeah, basically. No, across the road is the um, the funeral home. Um, the other side. The other side. Yeah, I can't reach that. That's, that's that way. I'm going here. Um, yeah, no, we were linked with Sturridge at the same time. And I, I think I would have taken them both to be considered at that point, just to have a striker. Um Right now, right now, um, I'm looking at that and thinking, dependent on what we go with tomorrow, we could be in some serious trouble pace-wise. Okay. Okay. Right. So, I suppose we're now going to come to the bit, Duke. This this is the important bit. What's your score prediction? Uh, I actually got asked this question at uh, around 9.30 in a text message from a friend of the channel, Mr. 50. Um, yep. he, he dropped me a message and just asked me for a score prediction. Oh, it's one all. I, I think this has got... Listen, I, I, I'm not overly confident we're going to take a win out of this, Rob. I'm really not. Um, I, I actually have got one all on this. Um, yeah. Uh, not... Fair comment, um, but no, I, I think one one. I think they'll, I think they'll go one nil up, and then we'll scrappily get back into it, and then defend for our lives um, to to get a point out of it. And I know we're at home, uh, but I, I I can see this, and we're we're all in the same boat. You said it yourself when you, when we started. These are our bogey team. Everyone going tomorrow is going to be a kind of oh, Brighton. And then it'll be that predictableness of the game. Not that we'll turn, but there'll be some groans. There'll be some moans from the fans. And, and it will filter down. Uh, a bit like the, um, was it the cup game? Uh, Johnson, Johnson, scored his, Johnson scored his first goal. Oh, no, that was, that was oh, a, a Premier League game. Uh, was oh, was it a Premier League game? I think. 
yeah. Um, very much the same sort of thing, that same sort of frustration, that same sort of, oh, God's sake, you know. We all watched it. I watched it on TV and felt the same thing. So I, I just have a feeling it's going to go the same way tomorrow. It's going to be a one-all draw, but there's going to be some moans and groans um, because of the way that we play when we come up against these guys. Well, you? Hammerhead, Hammerhead has gone with what I'm going to go with. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, listen, we haven't beaten them in the Premier League. It's, it has to change at some point. It has to change. At some point, we have to be whether it's whether it, we're the better team, whether we're the luckier team. I, I really don't care. There has to come a moment where we manage to get our noses over the line ahead of them. And why not tomorrow? Why not? You know, if we if we can have players that. Whatever the eleven is now, I, like I say, I have a suspicion it will be Antonio up top. But what a great substitute to bring on to the pitch with say half an hour left. You know, bring on Skamaka, bring on Cornet. And that, see, I actually think, I actually think that the game could be decided by the manager that makes the more astute tactical substitutions. I think if David Moyes can use his bench which is looking a little bit more deeper in terms of its quality than it did a couple of weeks ago, let's be honest. I think that if David Moyes can utilise the subs correctly, it that could be the, the, the difference maker. That could be the game changer. The only thing that concerns me is that one of the criticisms I do have of David Moyes is that he, he does make substitutes too late or they're the wrong substitutions or whatever. But I'm just, uh, listen, at some point, at some point, he's got to get it right, surely. Why not tomorrow? So I'm going to go, I, I reckon we'll go 1-0 down. I reckon we'll we'll fight back. It'll be, a, I don't think it'll be a game where we're ahead and we stay ahead and maybe they get a late consolation goal. I think we're going to go behind. I think we're going to have to chase the game. And I think we're going to win it late, possibly yeah. with a, sch- a Schemacher goal who comes off the bench, set up by Corney. There you go. You heard it here first. I, I hope you're right. I, I do hope you're right. So, <laughs> I do hope you're right. And that we, uh, we we get our season kick-started tomorrow with a, a, a real good result. But I can still one one. Fair, fair. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're, we've pretty much covered all the bases except... We have. For five Ooh. fascinating football factoids. There you go. There's only four. Oh. Still only four F's, Rob. You need a fifth F in there. Come on. Do you think so? Yes, because you're five. Well, I'll you're tell you what, if any of the live chat wants football. to put a, a, Guys in the live chat, give us an extra F that I can use to put in the five fab... Whatever. Yeah, okay. So, let's get the... I've got one, right. but I don't think we can get away with putting it on Probably there. not. That's probably the okay. after nine o'clock version. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, we have won none of our pr- ten Premier League games against Brighton. We have drawn six and we have lost four. It's both the most that we've ever faced an opponent without winning and the most that Brighton have faced one opponent without defeat. Again, I'm like, that's got to change at some point for both teams. So why not tomorrow? Fortune favours the brave. Anyway, factoid number two. They have never failed to score in 10 previous Premier League meetings with us. However, they have only kept two clean sheets in those 10 games and none in the last seven. So we're probably going to put the ball in the in the back of the net, aren't we, Duke? You'd like to think so, Rob. You would like to think so. Um, the fact that we failed to do so in our previous two Premier League attempts is a concern, but you'd like to think we've got it in us. Yeah, absolutely. So come on, don't let us down, boys. Don't let us down. If, you, if any of you boys are watching this, don't let us down. Come on. It's got to happen tomorrow. Third fabulous factoid is, in Premier League history, only Aston Villa with 160 have lost more home games than us with 159. With this, we are the 500th such game in co- in the competition. Um, we will become the ninth team to reach 500 Premier League home games with none of the previous eight losing that milestone match with five wins and three draws. So, 500th match in the Premier League at home. 
that's an achievement. Yeah, this is something to celebrate. Hopefully, we can. Yeah. Again, another reason, guys. You got to you got to pull it out the bag. Factoid number four: Brighton are unbeaten in their last seven Premier League games, only once having a longer unbeaten run in the top flight, going eight without defeat between October and November in 1981. I wasn't even born then. No, I was actually. That's a lie. What? What? Terrible. Anyway, 18, right. 18, 18. Thank you. Factoid number five. West Ham have lost both of our Premier League games so far this season. As we know, we went down 1-0 one, one at Nottingham Forest and 2-0 against Manchester City in our last outing at London Stadium. And only once in our league history have we lost each of our first three without scoring a single goal. Can you remember when that was, Duke? No. No, you, you, you're right. And neither do I, because I wasn't born. It was 1971-72. No, I wasn't born. Shut Be up. Aid. Shut up. There you go. Anyway. Be free. He's, he, Darren says we, the, the, the next F is free. I've dropped you one in the private you have, chat. And I, I wish I'd have thought of it, to be fair. I probably should have done. I think you need to change your banner and show people. Okay. All right. Get it in you, there. You, you, you Why you do that? With me. I'll chat bollocks. Um, yeah. I mean, listen. Tomorrow, tomorrow is a huge step uh, for us. I, I really think it's a, it's now a huge game. There, there's no dicking around the fact that we've lost the first two games of the season. No, that's not the one. No, what are you doing? The What's fact that we've on? lost the first two games. I don't know what are you done. No, my problem. Sounds like your problem. Sorry. Out. Um, hey, hey. There you go. See. I'll give you five F. I'm amazing. Um, no, I think we 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 need we need uh, a result tomorrow. I, like I say, I think it's going to be a one-all, but we need a win. The fact that we've we've come off the back of two two defeats, one expected. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, the performance wasn't, but the the result was, and then uh, a result that was unexpected against the performance that I expected. Do you, do, it sounds stupid, but mm. we were significantly better against Forest, And I actually think significantly the better team against Forest. We were just very, very unlucky with, with some of the things that, that, that you know, kind of came up. We came up against and came up against us. Saying that, we, um, we play like that tomorrow, like we did against Forest. It can go one or two ways because we can get punished if we're very um, slack with with what we do. Um, or we can go and score a player he's smiling on us. So, big, big game tomorrow. Huge for me. So early in the season, huge game. When you consider what we've got coming next down that line... This is this is we really need to get a kickstart. Otherwise, we could quite easily end up with no points after five or six games. Mm, that wouldn't be good. That would not be good because, of course, you'd have social media going into absolute meltdown, as you and I know. Oh, listen, listen. Social media went into meltdown last week at points, um, mm. which was which was shocking. Went into, um, the, and, into the meltdown after the first game. Well, it did, but I think not only did Twitter go into meltdown. Um, for for reasons that were match related. Mm. Social media went into meltdown and, and really reared its ugly head. I'm not gonna talk about it. You know what I'm talking about. Yep, reared yep. its ugly head in a in a horrible way. Again, because I think we lost Rob. We win that game, that that's gonna be non existent. Mm. You know what I mean? That 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 becomes uh, an absolute uh, absolute no point. It doesn't happen. We lost. It gave some. It gave people something to latch onto. Um, so it, it reared its ugly head. It it was it was awful to see. Um, if we end up not picking up an, uh, any point tomorrow, and then going to Viborg, winning but not showing, you know, in kind of, it's a worry. And then we end up facing Villa next Sunday. Am I right? Yes, I'm pretty sure you're right off the top of my head, but I will just then double check. that game, that game, that game becomes huge. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, ridiculously bad. 
uh, and it's away from home as well. So yes. we we need to get something on the ball tomorrow. Be a point. I'd love to. I'd love to see three, even a point. Let's get goals on the board. Let's get a point if you know we can't get all three. A point on the board, just because otherwise you know a significant portion of this this toxic. Uh, the toxic part of this fan base um, will will definitely rear its ugly head um, uh, about half past three, quarter to four tomorrow if uh, if we don't. Yeah. Duke, I'll be at the game tomorrow, as you know. I suspect that you're going to be attending to matters uh, in, your, in your business persona. Uh, with that in mind, can you recommend a place, especially if people are in a certain part of South East London, where well, they might want to go? Well, unfortunately, Robert, the game isn't televised. Oh, it isn't, is it? So no. we're not on TV they have to now. Go to the South of France, really. They would have to go to the South of France. Um, okay, well, look, if, they, if they just wanted to go to, to a go local booze or on a well, Sunday If they wanted afternoon. to come watch a couple of other games of football, there's a, a lovely place in enemy territory, um, as I as I keep calling it. Um we did have eight of us last week. Uh, great picture. New paint job. New flowers. And a dinosaur sitting in the middle window um, you of that picture. take a photograph of it. No, I'm waiting for it to take the scaffolding down, Rob. I don't really want a picture that you've got with scaffolding now, that do I? True. It's true. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the scaffolding is actually, if you look to the... Put that back up. Oh, hang on. To the... To the left-hand side of that picture, you've kind of got like a a, a creamy, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it, like a, a, a dark cream uh, on Rob's side of the picture there. Um, there's, a, there's like a dark cream. That's where the scaffolding is going up. We're now getting that repainted. They wasn't going to do it. I kicked up an absolute stink because it looks awful. So we're getting that painted. I think it's going to go white like the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the, the, the window frames and the and the sconces on the side of the building. So hopefully once that's done, I'll get you a picture. We can get a new one uploaded. But if you do want to come, you know where I am. Uh, like I say, I had six, uh, six, eight West Ham fans in here on Sunday, not including myself, but including Cyber. He uh, he was here. So um, yeah, it's it's a it's a nice place to come. I'll be honest with you, I was uh, relatively full. For a couple of hours last night of uh, the old enemy, because um, obviously they were on telly last night. I did come down after doing our video, Rob. Walked into the bar to be greeted with a cacophony of Moo! like that as I walked through the door. So I walked back out, <laughs> back upstairs, you. put a West Ham shirt back on, walked back out onto the bar and stood there with. Oh, it's in the middle of the pub and didn't <laughs> care. I, you know, the, the, I'll be honest. The banter was really good. It was, it was really friendly. It wasn't, it, it didn't, um, it wasn't horrible. I actually got talking to a, a Millwall fan who um, used to live around the corner from uh, from an ex West Ham player, and um, he told the story of. Um, he told me that when he when he met him and he had a drink with him in the local pub. Hmm. that this gentleman told him a story about the 65 um, Cup Winners' Cup final. Okay. And um, okay. He, he, had a, he had a certain Bobby Moore uh, walk up to him before they came out of the changing room. And you should know this story, Rob, because you've heard this a couple of times. Um, right, Bobby Moore turned around and told this certain player, if you, if you want to get on camera, if you want pictures taken of you, if you want to be seen, um, walk out behind me. Walk out behind me, son, and um, he actually has that picture of himself and Moro coming out of the tunnel at Wembley, um, up in his kitchen. Um, you obviously, I can see the smile. I can see the smile on your face. You know, yeah. I'm talking about Brian Deere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I said to him, you know, I've I've heard him tell that story. You know, I've heard him tell that story a couple of times at, um, at the events that we've been to. Um, yeah. Really, really nice guy. Um, stag, and he, you know, he's and a funny fucker as well. You know, he's, yeah, he says a story, very very told a story didn't he, about the um, the statue outside the stadium, and he says he wasn't meant to play in the final, was he? It was only because a bit like um, Jeff Hurst in the World Cup, someone came, uh, Greavesy came down ill, and that's why Hurst played, wasn't it? Well, yeah. 
Stags tells tells the same story, but from his perspective in the in the cup, this cup final, who wasn't meant to play, um, someone came ill, um, was told, you know, your I think it was a semi final. Um, Greenwood said, "Have you got your, have you got a passport? Bring it with you. You're playing." Ended up playing, and then ended up playing in the final. Um, and he says, you know, all the guys that got them to the final. Um, the statue outside the stadium, you've got the three boys, you know, our three favourite sons, and it, the names are Moore, Hurst, Peters, and then Deer is, is one of the last names you see on the front part of that statue. And he says, I find it funny because I weren't even meant to fucking play, and the rest of the boys have got us there. We're all round the back. No one sees their names because they're round the back of the statue. You don't go round the back of the statue, do you? And it's, you know, like I say, Rob, you were there when we he was at yeah. the... Um, it was at the wingers, uh, the wingers one, wasn't yeah. it? When we met, when we met Stuart Slater and Waldy, and and he said that there. And honest to God, um, I've, I've I've met Brian um, at the Genk game. Um, I, I've yeah. got a picture of me, me taken with him at the the Genk uh, European game. Genuinely nice guy, very very funny man. Um, as as Kent says there, nothing is any trouble for him. He's he's a genuinely nice guy. Um, and I will say, for those of you watching, there's 16 of you left, um, E13 events on Facebook, if you if you want to do things like, like that and meet some of the former players and stuff like that, get on their Facebook page, find out when their, their next set of um, their next set of shows are, when, they, when they've got those, because they are very, very good evenings, really enjoyable. You get to meet the players, you get to talk to the players. I think the last one Rob and I went to, was the Julian Diggs one, Rob, wasn't it? I know you went yeah. to the Mac of anyone, didn't you? Um, uh, last time I went was was obviously Julian Diggs, and again, absolute fanboy out. Was absolutely mental for me because I'm I'm meeting a guy that I, I was a hero. But no, guys, if you if you want to do shit like that, get on to e, I think you're popping it up, aren't you? There you go. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, yes, that one. A stretch. Yeah, if you get the opportunity, guys. Follow them, go to some of these shows because it really is a good night. That was the one we went to. Absolutely, yeah. I can that was the one, Russ. That was Russ Budden with, was it Waldy and Jarbo? Yeah, there you go. Look. Yeah, that, that one there. Top. That one there. Great, great night. Really enjoyable night, I've got to say. So, guys, get your, get your shout and get, get, get on there and, and go to a couple of them because they are thoroughly enjoyable. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. One other thing you won't regret is helping your fellow man, woman, and child through the Iron Supporting Food Bank charity. Uh, these, This is a charity that operates in the London borough of Newham area. This is the borough, as you know, West Ham reside within. Obviously, we're all going through a cost of living crisis. Some of us can't withstand it maybe as much as others. So this is a charity that's set up to help those families out that are struggling to put food on the table for their nearest and dearest. So you've got the Just Giving link there on that banner. I have also put it in the live chat. Should any of you wish to make a donation, there is no donation that is too small. Give generously as you can. You won't regret it. If any of you are going to the game tomorrow, as you come out of Westfield and you go across the bridge where you've got the Olympic Stadium looking at you in front, you've got the Aquatic Centre on your left, you've got a load of benches just on your left as well. John, the guy that runs this, he normally rocks up. He's normally got a flag that's up. Iron supporting food banks. You can't miss him normally. If you want to do it a little bit old school and, and sling a tenner or a score or whatever in it in his in his hand, then he'll take it off your hands, not a problem. If you want to go along there with any food items, cans of beans, soup, whatever, he'll he'll take it off your hands. It will go to a really, really worthwhile cause, guys. And I'll tell you something now. The feeling that you get when you when you've given something like that it, you you get a real warm feeling do you know what i mean you you won't lose out on it i guarantee you please do give generously and we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter and before we go please don't forget to like comment on and share the stream to your social media platforms subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content as always we thank you very much indeed for your support duke what are we my friend Massive, absolutely massive. Who do hopefully broken tomorrow? Two one win to West Ham. Skamaka with the winner. Come on, you irons. Oh, 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 oh,